We're going to deal with problems. We're going to have problems. I wish you'd tell somebody problems, in one sense, are part of life. And, and, and tell somebody, and we all going to deal with them. Some more than others, but we all going to deal with what? Problems. We all going to have our share of what? Problems. Pastor, but I'm saved. Yeah, you saved, but you're going to have your share of problems. And the thing about being saved or really being in God and being a student of God's word is that God should be the main one helping us to deal with problems. I want to also say to you that problems can also be seen as difficult situations. And think about dealing with a problem. Think about dealing with a difficult situation, but you're thinking more of yourself than you need to. I want to say to us tonight that there have been times in a lot of people's lives that things was going good for them. And then all of a sudden, they start dealing with problems. And because they didn't look to God to help them with their problems, they thought more of themselves than they should and decided to do a number of things which made the problem or the situation worse. I'm going to teach it tonight because that's what happens in church. Yeah, you say, yes, you faithful, but the way you deal with problems creates bigger problems. See, it's real tonight because, again, we all going to have problems. There have been people who business didn't do all that it needed to do because they didn't know how to deal with problems or difficult situations. Wouldn't it, be wouldn't it be wonderful if life itself was always wonderful? Everything went the way you wanted it to go. Prayers were answered in five minutes or less. Boy, somebody looking at me tonight just saying, but pastor, that ain't how it works. Who you talking to? I know it don't work like that. You going to have problems. But how you going to deal with them problems? And some of us, again, we are notorious for thinking more of ourselves than we need to when it comes to dealing with problems. We choose to do things, not acknowledging God, not praying. And this is what I want to submit to us tonight. When it comes to making decisions, we don't need to be controlled by some things that I'm going to mention tonight when it comes to dealing with problems and difficult situations. Don't allow anger to control you. You, you got to deal with that, but, but you can't let anger control you. Now, will God allow us sometimes to deal with a problem at the same time we, he allow us to express that we're angry about how it happened or how it came about? You know he'll do it. But, 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 he, but because God allows me to deal with a problem and express anger does not mean anger is controlling me. See, when Jesus went in that temple and overthrew them table, it was obvious to everybody that he was upset about what was going on in his house. But anger wasn't controlling him. He was in the will of God, though God allowed him to express that he was upset about something. But it is a difference in God allowing us to express that we're angry while dealing with a problem versus anger controlling us. Can't let anger be in control. Now, in time past, some of us have been controlled by anger, made decisions, decided to do things, and it seemingly went pretty well. But see, if you make it a habit of doing that, eventually, you're going to get yourself in some serious trouble. Well, Pastor, I make my best decisions when I get mad. I'm telling you, you're going to get yourself in a world of trouble. Do you hear me? You can't even make decisions 
with just excitement controlling you. I'm happy, so I'm going to do this. Hold up. See, see, I got to teach it because some people, when you look at how they deal with problems, a difficult situation, they always in their emotions. Never able really to hear clearly from God because some people, it's as if they live in their emotions. You can't be controlled by sadness. You can't. You can't let a problem so overwhelm you that the only reason you're not smiling is because of the problem. You that sad. The only reason you're not getting up doing what you see with your own natural eyes need to be done is because sadness is controlling you and that's how you're dealing with the problem out of a, out of a spirit of, of heaviness or sadness. The problem is reality. But reality is also that I allow God to lead me. I allow him to help me. To show me what I need to do. I allow him to show me what I don't need to do. God will go so far as to show you where you need to go. But then he'll also show you, don't go there. Whoa. He'll go so far as to tell you who you need to call. But he'll also tell you, make sure you don't share none of this with, with them. What is he doing? He's helping me deal with a difficult situation. And they happen in the church as well as in our homes and on our jobs. We don't stop being followers of the omniscient guy just because we leave the church grounds. You got to let him guide you on your job. You got to let him guide you down your career path. Woo, God almighty. Am I right about it? But if you start thinking more highly of yourself than you ought to, that's unproductive thinking. That's unproductive thinking. Guess what unproductive thinking leads to? It leads to two things. Number one, unproductive talking. It's no way to think consistently in an unproductive way, yet talk productive. You ain't going to do it. Your talk going to be unproductive. You're now saying things that you know you have no business saying. You're now talking in ways that you've been taught better. But unproductive thinking leads to unproductive talking which leads to unproductive doings or actions. Are y'all following me? And tell your neighbor tonight, let's settle this tonight. You may be very smart, but you are not in no way, shape, form, or fashion smarter than God. Now shout to him, let's settle that tonight. Whatever your best subject is that you consider yourself brilliant in, you can't touch God. Am I right about that? You can go to school six years and study a particular subject and still not know what God knows about that subject. Whoa! Good God Almighty. That's why so many scientists are atheists. That's why so many professors are atheists. They start learning, and based on learning, they start thinking more highly of themselves than they need to. 